What branch of Islam do you uh, practice? Well, I mean, it's, I mean, for me, you, you can call it Sunni. Sunni? Sunni. Okay. You know, we grew up with a lot of Shias. The school I went to was mostly Shia Muslims, and, you know, we used to pray together and be together. So that was kind of where, for us, it was, it was a little bit different than it would be for a general Pakistani who has not had any interaction. Because like I was telling you the other day, I mean, the more you get out of that isolated environment, the more you go and interact with people with different backgrounds. And for Pakistan, I mean, just going and interacting with someone who's not Sunni and who's Shia and vice versa opens up a whole new window of tolerance for you compared to someone who's always lived in a community which is 100% Sunni or 100% Shia and they've not had that interaction. Right, and, and the link over there is that the, the, the Prince Karim Ahmed, although you know the Sunnis don't follow him as a as a religious imam of any bearing, but you know more of as a political figure or a prominent figure more than anything else, he actually um, is doing a lot of educational work in different parts of the world. Pakistan is just one of them. The other large biggest educational institution is in Kenya. So they've opened up a university, a medical school, and, and a hospital, and they've done the same thing in Karachi where. They've uh, they built this uh, university, which is the Alpha University, is one of the most elite universities in, in Pakistan, actually in South Asia, for that matter. So that's what the link is. But he's done this as you know, as a part of his work more than as part of any religious movement. Then my mom was always, you know, that you need to always go to the next step once you've reached the first step. You know, there was no okay, you've reached this and this is your destiny, you always have to strive for better and more in terms of your education and what good you can do. So, you know, that was the thing that was taught us from a very early age to just keep seeking for, for improvement and betterment. And that was, you know, one thing led to the other. We went to one school trying to get to the best school and the best college. You know, we came from very, you know, I mean, we weren't really rich. We were a very, you know, average middle class environment and trying to work hard to get scholarships and, 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 and tuition grants and go to the best colleges we can possibly can. And then the medical school that we went to was one of the top elite ones. You know, name must have given you a, bit, a little bit of history that thousands of applicants apply and they only select 50 out of that. And, and it's a very stringent enrollment process that you go through. So, you know, we were both able, lucky enough that, you know, and, and, uh, to be able to get into that. And, I think what in the last few years what, what has been portrayed as I mean anytime you talk about a Muslim or Islam all you think of all you can think of is terrorism or terrorists right that's getting to be more synonymous than anything else it's unfortunate but the events in the world have led to that 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 way um, the one thing I can say is that you know it's a very tolerant religion it's as tolerant to the point where you know what what's commonly being believed as jihad and killing people is actually not even allowed as part of the religion. It's not even taught in that sense as, as if you must have learned about jihad. It's, it's, I mean, the way that jihad is explained in, in Islam is more about a fight, an inner fight to your own self against your inner evils and your, your desires and, and more common things. And that's the jihad that you do on a day-to-day -day basis to save yourself from your own inner desires of excess and, 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 and those things and trying to move yourself towards salvation, trying to do like this rather than more physical battle and, and, and struggle. What was truly striking about Pakistan and any other country for that matter, wherever in the world you are, a common person on the street is the same person anywhere. They all have the same goals to provide shelter for their children, to have safety, security, education and food. Everybody's striving for that. In some communities it's easily available. Like in America you can work hard enough and be able to achieve the basic necessities of life in other communities even it's, it's a lot harder. And that struggle is a struggle for life or a struggle to stay alive for that matter.